Hey what's up guys, so in horror movies it's not uncommon for the characters to go through some insane punishments. Today we'll look at some of the most evil ones. By the way, I know these aren't the only crazy moments, but just a few that I thought were pretty good. At one point in planning this video, I had more than 80 picks, so I had to select a handful that really stood out. So even though it wasn't that well received, a cure for wellness has an incredible atmosphere and setting. We follow the young and ambitious Lockhart who goes to a bizarre wellness spa in the Swiss Alps, which is run by a strange doctor. Even though Lockhart is only supposed to pick up the CEO of his company and bring him back to the United States, he soon winds up as a patient himself and slowly discovers the dark secrets of this isolated facility. Now the staff isn't too happy that he's constantly snooping around and this leads to various punishments from the lead doctor. Probably the worst one comes when one of Lockhart's teeth becomes loose. He pulls it out and shortly thereafter brings it to a staff member and while doing so he spots a chance to enter a part of the facility that is off limits and for staff only. Seeing this as an opportunity to find out what's really happening here, Lockhart decides to go inside. Unfortunately, he's quickly spotted by some of the employees who won't let him off so easily. When pressed about what the hell he's doing here, Lockhart mentions the tooth he lost and this gives the lead doctor, Heinrich Vollmer, an idea. He takes him to a small room where they can examine his teeth, but once inside he is quickly strapped down and the dentist takes a small drill right to his mouth. One thing that is clearly taken advantage of here is that everyone hates going to the dentist and merely the thought of having a scary high pitched drill in your mouth is enough for most people to not go for a long time. And the fact that they actually showed what was happening here was pretty impressive and I didn't think that they would do it the first time I watched it. Now in the last video we covered a fairly unbeatable death in the Final Destination movies, but now we're going to look at one that was among the most memorable, which is in the fifth movie. By the way, Final Destination 5 was way better than I thought it would be. In that entry we follow a group of 8 employees on a company retreat. They're taking a small bus and at one point cross a bridge. Here our main character Sam has a premonition that they will all die in a big accident. After his vision is over, he convinces all of his friends to leave early so they can save themselves from the upcoming disaster. And even though he does successfully manage to do that, we all know that death will now come after them. And one way that a group member is targeted is especially evil. A few days after cheating her death, Olivia has an appointment for her LASIK eye surgery. Of course. Now I know the following scene has like a million inaccuracies and it doesn't make any sense, but it's still an exciting moment. So Olivia is a little nervous at the doctor's office, but continues anyway. She follows the doctor into a dark room where she's asked to lie under the laser machine. Her head is fixed in place so that she can't move it, and her eye has a little clamp in it that forces it open. The doctor then leaves and Olivia is all alone. And through an odd series of events meticulously planned out by Death's design, the LASIK machine goes off and shoots the laser into her eye with much more power than it is supposed to. <laughs> Funnily enough, she manages to survive this, only to then slip and fall out of the window on top of a car. Now, yes, this scene is of course total bullshit. But it really did make a lot of people afraid of getting any kind of eye surgery as they thought something like this could really happen. Yeah, well, I mean, I know that LASIK surgery is a lot safer than in Final Destination, but I'm still going to stick with my glasses. Now let's cover a movie that was really just a lot of fun. It's a horror movie, but a fun one, and it's The Babysitter. Here, a 12 year old Cole is living the dream. He has a super hot babysitter who does a bunch of really cool stuff with him. To probably no one's surprise, Cole is the uber loser in school. It's portrayed this way in the movie. I mean, even his mom thinks he's a pussy. I think you are at a time in your life where a lot of things are scary. But when the babysitter is there, it's all okay. So one night, Be the Babysitter has some friends over for a small hangout at Cole's house. But it turns out that it's some kind of satanic ritual where they sacrifice another guy in order to get what they want. 
Cole witnesses all of this and calls the police to get some help. The rest of the group then head upstairs to Cole and draw some of his blood for the ritual, as they think he's unconscious when really he's just pretending to be asleep. During this sequence, B eventually finds out that Cole witnessed the ritual, so they tie him up in the living room and question him. But only a short amount of time later, the police arrive. Here there is a pretty insane fight scene with a number of crazy things going on, some of which I might want to cover in another video. But by far the craziest one is when Max throws a fire poker through one of the cop's eyes, and then later on uses the rod to break his skull apart. This is such an over the top kill and it just comes out of nowhere. The impact is a little bit lessened because there are so many ridiculous kills here, but it's still very extreme. This next one is more of a mystery thriller than a straight up horror, but it has an extremely intriguing premise. 2013's Oculus centers around two siblings, Kaylee and Tim Russell, who run a small private experiment on a mirror. They both had a terrible childhood after their father came into possession of this evil mirror that causes unexplainable deaths wherever it is. For example, one of the previous owners was found dead of dehydration in a bathtub filled with water. Perhaps the mirror's most prevalent power is its ability to manipulate reality, making you see things that aren't really there. And this is where the mirror pulls some incredibly nasty tricks. One of them is when the dad has a small injury on his finger and he covers it with a band-aid. He eventually takes it off so that he can type on his keyboard properly. But even after seeing it off and being placed on the other side of the desk, the band-aid reappears on his finger. And no matter how hard he pulls, it won't come off. So what's next? Well, if you haven't seen this clip, I can almost promise you it will change how you will look at some of your office equipment. He takes one of these sharp staple removers and starts forcing it under what he thinks is the band-aid so that it finally comes off. However, that's only the hallucination. Yes, in reality, he was sinking this sharp tool into his fingernail. What's so bad about this for me is that when you look at the D stapler, you can see his entire torn, ripped off fingernail still on the end. Ugh, this one's so gross. Now I don't know about you, but ever since the first time I watched this movie when I was 13, every time I see a D stapler to this day, this is the only thing I can think of. I actually got the idea of including this clip because one guy at work used this thing. It was the first time I've seen this object in 5 years and instantly my mind went to Oculus. Now we're going to cover another Mike Flanagan movie. I usually really like his stuff, so yeah. This one is Gerald's Game, and if you've seen the movie, you probably know where I'm going with this. So Gerald's Game is a Stephen King story with an extremely simple plot. A couple goes to a remote house to have some adult fun time. But during the foreplay, something goes horribly wrong. Gerald handcuffs Jesse to their bed and... Wait, wait, hold on. I'm a straight male, but can we acknowledge this guy's insane freaking body for like two seconds? He's almost 60 years old here, and he's hotter than most of us are now. What the hell? Anyway, Gerald dies of a heart attack pretty much right after handcuffing Jesse to the bed, and she's totally stuck there now. Now the clip I'll cover is technically spoilers, but it is sort of predictable from the start as this movie can really only go one way. So towards the end, Jessie realizes that there's only one way out. She tried every little thing and it doesn't work, so she's just gotta cut her way out. Well, not all the way. She cuts her hand open in an incredibly dangerous act of using a shard from a broken glass. Jessie cuts her hand a little and then proceeds to violently force her hand out of the cuff and this freaking thing happens. She rips off all the skin from her hand. Unfortunately, I can't show that much, that's just how YouTube works, I'm sorry, but it is insanely brutal and Carla Gugino's visceral acting makes it really believable. Great job, Mike Flanagan. He ruined office equipment, mirrors, handcuffs, what's next? Air. I really love this movie because it felt like a horror movie for grown-ups 
covering much more mature themes, which is really refreshing because most horror movies, and most movies in general, clearly target a younger audience, which makes a lot of sense from a financial standpoint, but that makes a movie like Gerald's Game stand out even more. Anyway, those were some of the worst punishments in horror movies. Let me know which ones you would have included. Anyways, as always, I hope you liked it, and that I get to see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.